Okay, so let's talk about food identification. This is super important in your quest to acquiring the nutrition skills needed to not only keep you healthy, but to achieve the physique uh, that you're uh, um, working towards. All right, so I can tell you what to eat, but I think it's so important for you to learn the why behind it. And nutrition or food identification is the key because there's a difference between um, things like, say, a chicken thigh versus a chicken breast. I'm meal prepping right now. I'm actually cooking chicken thighs and chicken breasts right now for a reason. One, the difference between these two, the chicken thigh, is it's a higher fat protein source, right? And then you have the chicken breast, which is a lower fat protein source. Same thing, there's a difference between a whole egg, a higher fat protein source, and an egg white, which is a lower fat protein source. Ground beef, right? You have a 80-20 ground beef, which is a higher fat ground beef, or 85-15, sometimes a 90-10, but then you also have a 96-4, which is a lower fat ground beef. And then you have a ribeye. A ribeye is a higher fat red meat versus say a filet, which is a lower fat red meat. So all this matters because you're trying to maximize satiety while at the same time managing calories, right? You're trying to eat the most amount of food for the least amount of calories, right? Um, let's even go a little far farther, right? Because those are uh, energy sources. Fat is obviously an energy source. And then we have to talk about also um, when we put the two energy sources together, say a carbohydrate and a fat together, right? So let's go with a oatmeal. If I'm gonna have oatmeal, I'm always gonna have it with eggs or a protein, could be a protein shake, could be uh, even chicken, right? Could be a low, a low fat chicken to go along with my high carbohydrate oatmeal, right? If I'm going to eat breakfast at a buffet, or I'm going to go to a diner, uh, I'm almost always going to have pancakes and I need to have protein with that. So I'm not going to have whole eggs or a whole egg omelet to go with my pancakes because that's too much energy going in. That's a high carbohydrate pancake, right? High carbohydrate food source and a high fat protein, which is the whole egg or egg, whole egg omelet. So I'm always trying to manage calories. So I'm not gonna put those two things together. There's too many calories all at one time. So I'm gonna have my pancakes with an egg white omelet, right? Or I could go with a low fat chicken breast if I really wanted to as well, right? Or a protein shake. I'm always trying to combine my energy sources. Uh, I don't wanna have too high, two different food sources with a high fat and high carb at the same time. I wanna have a lower fat, and a high carb or a higher fat and a low carb, right? So I'm always trying to manage my calorie load so I can have, but at the same time, have the things I enjoy eating, right? So that's why it's so important that you know how to identify, how to identify food sources. Uh, for instance, uh, pizza. Someone's gonna tell me, oh, I don't eat pizza because I'm trying to watch my carbs. Well, guess what? Pizza is extremely high fat. It's not a high carb meal. It's more higher fat. Now it's both, but if you're really looking at managing calories while you're eating pizza, it's not because it's not coming from carbohydrates, it's coming from the cheese, which is fat, right? High fat and high carb at the same time. So pizza is really a high calorie food source. Not to say you can't have it, but you need to know what it is. The majority of the calories from pizza comes from the fat. Nine calories per gram fat, four calories per, uh, per gram for the carbohydrate source. So it's not a high carb meal. It's a high calorie meal with the majority of the calories coming from the fat source, which is cheese. Um, how about cookies or pastries? Once again, I love pastries. I love my guava and cheese pastelito. 
I love empanadas. I love these things, but they're not high carb like most people think. They're actually high fat. Now, where's the fat coming from? Butter. Got me? So you can have that, the pastelito or the cake or the cookies, but understand that if you have that, you've probably had enough fat for the day and you might need to manage the fat in your next meal or the next day. Manage the calories coming from fat. That's what I would do. I'm consciously aware that I had a high fat meal, which means and in, in turn, I'm going to manage the calories either before that meal or after that meal coming from fat. Do you understand? So the more you educate yourself, which is I'm trying to do right now with you, educate you, teach you the why, not just what. I, I want you to know how to fish. And in um, the book, Dials and Levers, I go in depth with this because I want you to have the nutrition skills to carry you through life, to empower you. So you're conscious about your food choices. You're not just mindlessly ordering the appetizer with a glass of wine, the ribeye, the mac and cheese, and the dessert. If you want the dessert, go for it. But what is the dessert? It's most likely a lot of fat and carbs. So if I'm going to have that dessert, that will, that will dictate what I have for dinner. That means I'm not going to have the appetizer. I'm probably not going to drink alcohol. And I'm probably going to have a lower fat protein source like a fish or a chicken with vegetables. And then I'm going to have my dessert. Do you guys understand? So that's how you kind of have your cake and eat it too. You can flexible diet your way to the body you want, but you have to know what the food source is. You can mindfully adjust for the calories that are in that particular meal. Okay. Hope you understand. Leave any questions or comments below and I'll be happy to answer them and I'll see you on the next one.